I've already sent three letters to the SSA for the removal of signature from the SS5. And in the first letter, I sent my social security cards to them. And as the cards are theirs, I have received a letter from them returning the cards. I sent to them, the letter says, dear Mrs. blah, blah, blah. It appears to include the original documents when submitted your Privacy Act inquiry dated April 16, 2022. We are required to return all original documents to you. They are enclosed. Thank you for your inquiry. Sincerely, privacy officer. Number one, based on the previous, what am I supposed to do with these cards now? You had a beneficial interest on these cards. So my question to you is, remember what we're doing. Read the document just one more time, just for clarity. But you're now the beneficiary of anything pertaining to that social and not the not the trustee. Now, you, you, you can completely give up the right to use the social security, um, but you're not, you're not quashing the trust, meaning you're not, you're not destroying what is theirs, because it is theirs. Now, you can, you can bankrupt the BC, become a primary creditor, or, go, or file a bankruptcy, put the BC as been a, you know, being an asset, and then you come in as the primary creditor in the BC and do all kinds of fun, tricky stuff. But the, the, the social security is their employment ID number for you. Now you, because you put in money as a, a, an equity position when starting when you were a child um, into the social security administrative system, I, number one, I don't care when they turn it into a federal benefit or a tax or whatever, that has nothing to do with me. As a state citizen, my sweat equity went forward and I'm gonna be the beneficial interest position for that social security ID. I'm not gonna use it. And again, I'm uncontracted to it because that's basically what you did with your three letters. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, you made an attempt, you threw them the cards, they threw them back, big deal. We're in, cards don't mean because they're in your possession that you're, you're now the surety again. You know what I'm saying? You've created the contract, you laid it out, you threw them the cards saying, I really don't care about you. They're saying, well, you didn't quash the trust. Here's basically what they're saying. You didn't quash the trust um, because due to the Privacy Act, we're going to send these back to you. And and that's all they're doing. And so it's not that, you know, we didn't swing a bat and knock these, knock the Social Security account um, for debt. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't do that. We just said, you keep operating it however you want. I'm the beneficiary. And I when, when it comes to my retirement. Um, I wanted to go into my foundation account and uh, and I'm going to fill out that new retirement um, form as a state of the union citizen, showing that I am the beneficial interest for the registered organization. So I wouldn't put a, any credence in it. The most important thing that you have to realize is the three letters created in the new contract. And that's really where you stand. And that's it. Just leave it there. You, you created the new contract. Um, even as beneficiary, you have an absolute right to hold those cards uh, in your hand. It doesn't mean that they're yours. They do belong to them, but you have an absolute right to hold those cards in your hand. But if you killed the trust and there is no trust, those cards are meaningless, right? And there are people out there that are making attempts to kill what doesn't belong to them. Okay. It belongs to the SSA. Um, the birth certificate is debatable. And uh, not going to get into that right here, but the birth certificate is debatable. And so there's ways that, pe that people are starting to work in a, and have mass success at pulling the B BC out of the public and into the private at the county recorders. And also doing what I just said before within relations to um, discharging debt, you know, through bankruptcy. I've seen it uh, and it's crazy. BC is an asset. You list yourself as the primary creditor. And uh, what happens? Do they get paid or do you get paid? Some people have done some pretty crazy things through bankruptcy court, hung up stuff in bankruptcy court, judges not knowing what to do. But at your BC, what are they going to do? Admit that it's theirs and that's how they're paying these creditors through the BC? Well, if you're the primary creditor, there's, there's just because of how you put it down on the BC when you made the pay, paperwork and the filing, there's assets and there's liabilities and, and there's, you know, there's creditors. And if you're the primary creditor on that asset piece, then um, what are they going to do? You know, it's it, it's all hell breaks loose, but that's that's a whole nother story. It's 
the the point i'm trying to make is there's things that belong to them that we got to stop acting like they're ours the live born record that they took a picture of and put it on 32 pound watermark banknote paper and they're utilizing this as the birth certificate the abandoned certificate that's the um that's theirs the live born record's yours and so there's things that you could do to pull that and separate those and and we're actually working on a series of different things um, it's not a priority for me. I just want to come out and, uh, but I don't, I also want eventually to get to the point where we can just cut them off and their use of my live born record or my children's live born records to make themselves rich. So, but don't worry about it.